try to help out his, uh, his, uh, his girlfriend too there and how to go about getting a Canadian license. Is, would, that, would that happen to be the one? I think that's someone else. Gary, can you give Mike to the call sign? Yeah, uh, Kilo Delta 9, Lima Whiskey Juliet. Kilo Delta 9, Lima Whiskey Juliet. Uh, that was Roger in North Liberty, Indiana. North Liberty, Indiana. And uh, I think uh, you're talking about somebody else there, uh, Roley. Yeah, the other one was Victor, Victor Juliet, Brad. It was his girlfriend that was trying to get a license. Hey. What's up, you guys? K1 GMM. Happy Monday. Slappy Monday. Hope you guys had a good Easter. Uh, I have kind of some interesting things to show you I've been playing with over the past uh, three days. Mm. And I've got my pomegranate tea and all is well with the world. <laughs> uh, what's up, Mike? How the heck are you? Well, I've been thinking about how to do this, and I, I don't, well, I kind of know where to start uh, because this is such a broad scoping thing. For those that know me and have been talking to me in the past few days, uh, select few, you know, I'm always looking for another transceiver. Like, I, I was... Um, looking at like a, just, it doesn't matter what it is, but I'll just tell you, I, I've always wanted to play with like a 590 SG. And for those of us that have a 7300, the 7300 is... an amazing little piece of radio. Um, probably the best PA uh, on the planet that has ever existed for a conventional super hit outside of... What, I'm, what I mean by that is it's an incredibly clean PA. Yes, there are radios that sound better, uh, that will go wider, um, like some old Kenwoods, uh, even a new... Probably the 890S is capable of 4 kilohertz wide, but we're not going to talk about that today. This is all about receive. So for those of us that have a, a conventional super hat, or let's say it's an, H, an SDR, like a 7300, anybody who owns a 7300 that has owned another radio, uh, I can tell you that the front end is... Listening to that is like having someone drive a railroad spike through my skull. It's it's an incredibly hot front end. It's an incredibly good receiver. It hears incredibly well. But it's brash and it's noisy and it's harsh and sharp. and um, It's just the nature of the, the, the front end, I guess. I don't know. So... I got thinking about this. We talk so much about the TX side of the hobby, getting our audio straightened out and everything. And I got thinking, well, why am I looking at another radio? Why don't I see if I can bring the receiver end of the 7300? Now, I'm not talking about using, you're going to see a pan adapter running, and that's only running as a control surface. I'm not listening through it at all. Um, this setup right here rivals anything that I have played with so far. Any SDR receiver. What I'm about to show you guys is absolute freaking insane. And it's free. <laughs> Except for one thing. And you could probably still do it free. And I'll get into that. Um, how do you get the front end of these things? Take the T now that you got the TX side figured out, right? How do you get the front end, the receiver side, so that it's really nice to listen to? And how do you control like the bomb bodacious, bombastic, static crashing? 
just the ambient noise that's inherent on a conventional trend, even in SDR radio. What I'm about to tell you is I've never, one, I've never seen anybody do this before. I don't know why. Maybe they have, and maybe they could even point me into a better direction. This is why I'm throwing this stuff out here. It's ideas. I like experimenting with things. So, you know, even playing with an HF Plus or an Aspi or an RSP Duo or an Anon or whatever SDR radio, what I call true SDR radio, um, the 7300 is nothing but a glorified super hat. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's all it is. Um, I'll give you a quick example of that. I was listening, I was talking to a friend of mine on Zello the other night, Jason, and he has good old Kenwood TS430, and I heard it in the background, and I thought, God, that thing sounds freaking awesome. And I was listening to it through a little network radio, right? I could hear it. I was like third person on the other end of Zello. Listen, I said, what radio is that? And he's like, oh, it's a 430. And it just jumped right out at me. The receive on that is so much nicer. I could hear everything on that radio that I hear on the 7300. I kid you not. But it was beautiful to listen to. So, you know, I was thinking, I was like, I got to get that. I got to see if I can do something about the 7300 the way it sounds on receive. Because it's just, it's too much, man. So what I was saying about the, even the SDR radios... You ever notice that uh, for those of us who play in the SDR realm, I'm talking just strictly the receive, right? You can have a weak signal and you have to crack the radio open so far, the AG, you got to pull open the AGC up and everything comes roaring in just to be able to hear that station. Well, there's got to be a better way to do this, right? So how about piping the audio to a digital audio workstation on your computer from the front end of any transceiver, including an SDR transceiver, and get yourself a good set of plugins and run some DSP noise reduction in there. Well, this is what I've been playing with, and it's all free. So, and I'm and this is this is gonna get kind of I'm gonna kind of keep my eye off the chat because I don't want to get get derailed. This is going to look incredibly complicated, but it's actually not. Um, what you were just listening to was the system running. Uh, so what you have right here, I'm going to show you. This is basically HD-SDR. It's running on an HF+. Plus. You can run it on a $20 uh, RTL-SDR. Because all it is, all I'm using this for is a control surface. Now I do have HRD running down here, and I use this as an additional control surface. And this controls the IF shift, um, drive levels, filter widths, uh, twin PBTs, uh, right from the computer screen, all on one screen. So that's why I do this. And I did a little research, and it looks like the turds at HRD have. Uh, Pretty much the only place you could get the last free version of HRD is now offline. Uh, I just went to his website just about, a, I don't know, an hour ago. Just to make sure you could still get it there, you can't. So, um, I'm not a big fan of HRD. They, they forced everybody to take down the last free version. Um, typical. Typical garbage you got to put up with. It's everywhere. So... I did a little research because I wanted a solution to the control surface. Now, this isn't what we're really going to get into, but this makes it very handy so you're not having to fuss with the transceiver all the time, like reach over and fuss with it. Um, DX, is it, uh, what the heck is it called? DX Atlas, DX Labs, I think it is. It's free software. They have a control surface that you can run. It's free. It's a free package you can download. Uh, you should ha- you should have it on a computer anyways. It's the same people that do OmniRig. So uh, just type in, uh, I think it's DX Atlas. Um, nope, this is not like Audacity. Uh, so what I'm using, so let me get over here. I'm going to show you. Uh, there's links in the description 
for the specific things you need to download and install. Uh, let me jump out to this other camera quick here. So I already had this. This is the sound card and I use this sound card for the Anon. Um, I'm going to be selling this. I'm getting rid of this and I'm getting a Mackie. It's about the same price and I'm a big Mackie fan. This card is a little quirky. It, it's the M Audio Air 192.4, 192 kilohertz card. It is light speed. It is non-zero latency, but there is zero perceptible latency. It's running at literally like five milliseconds right now or 10 milliseconds. And I'm actually monitoring myself through the software, through this. I'm listening to it. This right here. And you can see the uh, meters jumping here. And this is being piped to OBS, what you're hearing on the stream. Um, so, uh, actually, let me... Uh, do I have that right? I do have that right. Everything looks good. So, uh, let me get... Uh, this is Cakewalk, by the way. This is Cakewalk by Band Labs. This is free. It's a digital audio workstation. I'm going to do a quick walkthrough. Pretty much everything you need to know you can find online about this. But I'm going to do try and do a speedy walkthrough how to get this up and running and, and how to make everything work. So, uh, you will need this. This is Cakewalk. Just go here and download it, okay? And I'm going to go back to this for a second. So that this is Cakewalk. That's what it looks like. And it's a digital, what's called a digital audio workstation. Now you have what's called VST plugins. And again, the links are in the description. So let's see, what did I get? Jeez. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I should have had all the, I forgot to open all of these up so I could show you what exactly what they are. Um, you know what I can do? Let's just go here. And. Hmm. Boom. Oh, this is titled wrong. Are you kidding? That's pretty funny. All right, so let me open this. I'm going to have to mute it. All right, so let me open this. I'm going to have to mute it. All right, so let me open this. I'm have to mute it. Heavens. Uh, let's see. Description. I can get them. Okay. Burtom audio. That's one. So let me get back over here. Okay, you're going to want this. Bertom Audio Denoiser. Now, when you run a digital audio workstation, you have what's called VST plugins. They're plugins. So when you download and you go to install this, if you don't know how to install an EXE, you shouldn't be doing this. All right, I'm just going to say that up front. Um, pay attention to where you're installing it to. You're going to need to install them to the easiest way to do it. Now, let me get over to this screen. Let's see. Uh, let's go to C drive. Okay. You're going to want to go uh, Cakewalk will go into if you're running a 64 bit system, uh, you'll find it in program files. All right. If you're not, you'll find it in the x86 program files. So you want to install it to Cakewalk into VST plugins right here. That's where you want to di direct the install of all of your VSTs. Now that's one VST, all right? This is the other VST, uh, Reaper, the Reaper plugins. Install this exactly the same way. If you're on a 64-bit system, grab this and install it. And I'm going to get into what these do. Uh, coming up here. Stand by. Okay, you will be able to run uh, 32 or 64-bit. Uh, shouldn't be an issue, uh, Mike. 
All right, so, so once you install these plugins to the correct directory, okay, um, you'll have, let me open this up full screen. So this is what I have on Cakewalk right now. So I have two tracks. Um, one thing you're going to need to do, uh, let me start here. So how do you get the sound from your rig and just ignore the microphone? Uh, like this is a little, a little bit more complicated than what you guys would need to do. All you need is like one channel. All right. Um, so let's say you got one channel and you need to get the audio from the rig to the software. Right? How do you do that? All right. So, like I said before, when you jump over here, I have an external sound card I use for the Anon. In theory, you probably don't. I would say you don't need this. You can you can download this. I'll put this link in the description because I forgot to do this. Okay. Let me jump over here. I know we're doing a lot of jumping around. Okay, this is ASIO for all. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this. I've worked with this before, it's very good. It's a low latency driver, ASIO driver for your real tech audio. Um, you basically install this and there's uh, information on how to configure it online. Uh, the reason why I say this is you can use your onboard sound card in the computer. If you don't care about latency, you can probably just say, ah, oh, the heck with it, and just run it right on your sound card in, in the computer without running an external sound card. My recommendation would be to get, to get a decent external sound card, but I would try this first. Yeah, and I've run this before, this ASIO for all low latency audio driver. Killer. It works great. Um, free. Also free. So how do you get the audio from the rig to the software? So let's jump over here. If you notice right here, I thought about taking it out of the speaker out, but you don't have to do that. What you can do is you can take this. I made up a cable, goes into the headphone out on the 7300, and then it goes into right there, into the sound card, into channel two on the sound card. Now the sound card is basically the buffer. Uh, it takes the audio signals and uh, sends all of that information to the software, right? Um, that's why you have to have a sound card. But you can try and use the one in Windows. Now, what if you don't have this? Well, you could make up a cable, a 3.5 TRS, and plug it into a line in on the sound card in your computer. Load up your SEO for all, and you're off and running. So, let's jump over. So that's basically how I get the audio from the transceiver to the uh, to the software. Now, let me go back to here. Now, your volume control on your radio will control the drive to. Looks like my camera's out of focus. I focused it three times, and it's still ain't right. That's probably a little better. All right, Mike, see ya. Um, so I use two things, and you could do this also with your transceiver, um, your own transceiver. And I'm gonna, this is going to get crazy, but when I explain it to you, you'll understand it. Obviously, your volume out controls the drive level to your sound card, right? You also have your, your uh, RF gain. Now that's critical as well. So let's jump over to the software. So back to the sound card. The first thing you gotta do is you gotta go to edit preferences and you'll see audio on the top and devices. And this is where you need to set your input drivers and your output drivers to the sound card you're using. See, you'll see uh, Realtek ASIO HD audio input. Any sound card that's available, 
in on your computer will show up here. So you need to check the appropriate sound card for in and out. Um, show mono outputs. Make sure that's checked. Uh, your driver setting. All right. This is the other thing. Make sure playback timing marker. Uh, timing timing master. Um, make sure that's set appropriately. Okay. That's I'm using an M Audio Air 192. That's so in and. Uh, playback and record make sure that's set appropriately uh, let's see uh, I didn't touch any of this um, none of this all I did was I made sure this is set correctly and then you have a mixing latency so you can open up this SEO panel okay I can't do that because it shuts the audio off. <laughs> I just heard my audio die. So you want to go into the ASIO panel. What you're going to see there, um, let me just describe it and then I'll open it up and I'll show it to you. So what you'll see is, don't don't fuss with this. Open up your ASIO panel. And this is going to be the latency control. All right. So right now I'm running on 2.8 milliseconds at 530 samples in and 2.8 out. Uh, total round trip is 5.5 milliseconds. That is lightning fast, man. That's cracking. Um, and that does have to do with the card I'm using. Uh, so anyways, uh, I'm going to open this up. The audio is going to die. But before I say this, you're going to see a slider on there. And you want to set that slider as low to the left as possible until you hear stuttering start. And then you bring it back up. Once the stuttering disappears, you can leave it there and run it for a while. Make sure it's stable. So here we go. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay. So once that's set, your sound card's all set. So your track, uh, what you need to do here, okay, where are you? Track one, track two. So you got to set where your audio is going to go here. And, ooh, I moved that. Don't move that, dude. Um, Uh, this is track one. Okay, this is the audio for the radio. All right. Um, so what you need to do is you need to set up your... I can't remember where this is because this is so fresh and new. <laughs> wow. Uh, I thought it was down here. Oh, uh, okay, so right here uh, are the ins and outs, all right? So you'll have a channel strip, and this this is for recording. Uh, if I were to put this into record, you can record, and this thing will dance and start going across the screen. So just ignore this. This is what you want to focus on. So you, you set your input for however many inputs you have on your sound card. Um, you can click this drop down and they will all pop out here. So you set it to whatever input you want it to listen to, and then you set it to wherever you want it to go. Uh, mine I have set to master. I didn't fuss with it at all. So that's that's generally the setup. Now we're gonna get into the dirty stuff. All right, so we mentioned the plugins before. So uh, let's select channel two. So the plugins are right here, you'll see. Um, so you'll have an FX. You've got your gain at the top. Okay, you wanna set the gain. You don't want, this is digital, so you don't wanna clip it. Um, you don't wanna go above zero D, definitely. Uh, like minus three is about it. You don't wanna go above, above that because you're going to clipping and digital clipping is horrid. So set your gains appropriately, light the radio up. You should see these meters start to move. And uh, you will, to hear it, you'll have to check this box 
or these boxes. This allows the monitoring of the audio to take place. Otherwise, you're not going to hear anything. This is what I was looking for, something that would do real-time processing in the real-time domain. Right? So you set your gain, and now you've got FX. This is where you choose your VSTs that you put in. So uh, what I have is the Bertram, Bertram Denoiser, which is right here. And to find these, you insert audio effects. And the noiser's right there. I have a bunch of stuff in there. Um, you may find it under uncategorized at the bottom. Maybe not. Um, also, oh, I forgot to show you this. So to find your VST plugins, right? So go down to here, File, VST Settings. So... You can add directories right here, or you can do a scan. Now, if you do a scan, it should find them automatically. And you'll see this thing, I'll hit scan. See this? EST scan, scan complete, 58 plugins found. Okay, so it sees all the plugins that I put in there. And then you hit apply, and okay. And those plugins will show up in the FX window. I know that you guys, your eyes are probably glazing over and most of you have probably shut this off by now. Uh, but when I demo this, you'll be like, holy crap. Um, so uh, get your plugins in there. So I have the denoiser. So let me open this. Now I played with this. Let me show you this quick. Uh, uh, ack. I think it's Accusonus. Accusonus. That's not it. Okay. Okay, let me get over to this screen. So I played, I actually uh, paid for a trial of this. I would not recommend this. This this is supposedly superb software. I would not do it. Don't waste your money on it. The denoiser is supposed to be really phenomenal. But however, in this realm, in this domain, this is for like music production. In this domain, it has that warbly watery effect. Um... It produces this, it, like we've all heard it, with different DSP systems. Some are good, some are eh, some are absolutely horrid. You know how you hit that, that watery, crappy sound? That's what it does. It's bogus. So let me, uh, I'm going to go ahead and close that. I'm going to get back over here. So, so open up your denoiser, and here are your settings for your denoiser. And I'm going to go ahead and walk through all of this stuff. Um once I light it, light everything up. And then I have the uh, equalizer. So I run an equalizer. And I found that I want to, because a, an HF transceiver, let's say an ICOM 7300, doesn't have the capability to listen above 3.6 kilohertz. So why do you want anything above 3.6 kilohertz in this area? Uh, most of the time I'm running because this radio rig, I can push it to 3.1 on transmit. I don't listen above three kilohertz on this. Hardly ever. Because I use it for DXing and contesting and stuff. And this is what this system is really for. This is what I wanted it for. So I can run on the front end of the 7300 and actually enjoy it instead of having my head split open. Um, so... Uh, here's an EQ that I run, and you can see I've got uh, a big roll-off at about 3, what is this? This is 4 at 2870. It starts to roll off, and I can probably push that up a little bit, but um, seems to work okay there. And then it, it just, it's rock bottom from, what is this? Uh, yeah, around 10,000 hertz, it, it's just shut right off. Uh, got a little bump here, around 100 hertz maybe. Um, pretty much flat, so not much EQ really. Uh, I'm just trying to get rid of the noise. That's the goal here. 
Improve signal noise ratio and get rid of the noise. I'm going to show you something that's freaking terrifying, man. Wait till you see this. Um, here is one of the things that makes the magic happen. Uh, so I put in a gate into the audio chain. And this gate does not work like a squelch. It is really superb. And what helps this work not like a squelch and improve it is that I am running this. Let's get over here. I'm running this. So this, if you click this button up here at the top, you make sure track two is selected, right? Track two, click this button. It will open a whole separate pane. Now you got little power buttons here to turn this stuff on and off. So I run an additional EQ here. This is a parametric, all right? Also has a tube emulator uh, down here. Tube console, I don't use it. Uh, I don't really want to affect the audio that much. Um, but this compressor is a superb compressor. So what I found is if I run the compressor, now this is on received audio, keep this in mind. If I run this at a four to one, if the static crashing gets really bad, I'll go to eight or 12 to one, right? And what ends up happening is the weaker signals, you know how a signal will come in, shoot, just bump this. A signal will come in and you'll have, you'll be listening to a 20, 30 over signal and then some will come in at like an S7, S9. And it, and it sounds like they're right off the noise floor, especially on a noisy band. Well, it doesn't work like this. When you use this system, that weaker signal comes right up out of the noise. And you can run this gate so that when they, when they unkey, it goes quiet, man. It's like, boom, the, the bottom falls out. It's, it's a beautiful thing, man. And I'll show you guys what it's like. Now, in combination with the denoiser, the denoiser removes a lot of that trash that you hear on HF, ambient static noise, QRN. The static crashing is so much more tolerable. Um, just doesn't, all you hear is basically a little crack and that's it. But if you watch it, it, it doesn't really do anything and you don't lose the audio. Um, Okay, Martin, uh, let me, ch uh, so I'm going to move on here. So I covered the compressor. These are the key things right here. Denoiser, the equalizer, not necessary, but I found the equalizer does help. I run two, this one here and this one over here. Uh, and then the gate. And I found that this compressor is a game changer. This thing is freaking gangbusters, man, because this is what you get rid of the noise you suppress the noise and then you compress the audio and then limit it at the same time and gate it. So your weak signals come right up uh, out of the noise and everything kind of levels out and it's just really nice to listen to, man. So this is a, you can do this on a conventional super hat and this crap is free. <laughs> it, it took me, I had to hack my way through it. It took me, I don't know, probably four or five hours to hack my way through it. And, uh, but it, see, I've already worked with this stuff before. So, but it was, oh, it was a while ago. Couldn't remember. So anyways, let me jump over to the chat quick before I go any further. Uh, okay. Mike's bailed out. Okay. How you adjust the timber of the sound? Um, which sound, which sound are you referring to? Uh, the mixing program is called, I'm going to put it in here. Cakewalk by Band Labs. So that's what the mixing program is called. Now you can also use this to pipe audio to your transceiver. If you have an external sound card, you can send the audio to your transceiver and do all your audio processing in the computer. See, that's the cool part. You don't need a rack. Well, I like my rack. Uh, I, I get a specific sound out of this rack that I, I won't be able to get um, in, the, um, in the software. Uh, not sure. 
Show me how you adjust the timbre of the sound. See, I'm not sure which sound you're referring to. Are you talking about my microphone or the radio? I'll wait for your response on that. So let's get over to, let me put this, minimize this again. I'm going to get this over here. Now you're going to want to keep, you're going to want to keep your, unless you're really, um, unless you really got it dialed in, you're listening to a consistent signal. So let me see if I can find a consistent signal here. Uh, good signal. So let's go over here. We'll unmute. And uh, have a good evening. And uh, let's see, up here it goes to Whiskey Zero, Papa Juliet Hotel, KD4EAQ. Over to you. Okay, John, real good signal. You're fading a little bit, but you're still Q5. So, uh, signal, thanks for, uh, thanks for turning it. Okay, so if, and, uh, if you get some chopping, uh, uh, Ernie, uh, Ernie, you're going to have to drop it. Drop the gate a little bit. Okay, so the interesting thing, right? This is what I want to show you. So the interesting thing is if you want to control the drive, right? Let's say the signals don't don't fuss too much with the software. If you have an external sound card, uh, let me jump over here quick. Uh, radio. So if you have an external sound card, your drive levels are right here. This is my microphone for the station, the, the, big, the big dog right here. This is where it comes into. That feeds the Anon and feeds the computer audio to the OBS, right? So um, and this is for the radio. So I don't, once this is set, I don't touch this, right? So I, I set everything up on a station that's like, oh gosh, 30 over. 40 over, something like that. And then if if you get in a situation like this where it's quiet, let me kick the audio in. See, he's only about an S6 to S7. So you can set... Let me, let me lower this a little bit. So you can set your audio overall on the software and don't touch it. And then you can just take the volume knob and you can just give the volume knob a bump. Now you'll notice the meter isn't hardly moving on this. And I have the RF gain down. And what I found is that if you roll the RF gain back, it reduces the initial noise. Now, if you look at the pan adapter, let me bring the volume back up. And, uh, then the next morning, I woke up and uh, I, I, I lasted a couple hours. And then if I, I grab dead. a better station. 3P here. with a comment about your Lockheed Electra. Over. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, that's what it's called. Uh, I've got the, I just turned on the computer and uh, so you got to get uh, ready to make sure I don't override the net. Uh, very good. Well, uh, good. good uh, I'm looking at an L1011 here as a desktop. I did pick up some clips uh, three or four months ago, and I would love to get that as a QSL card over. Yeah, right. I had to make a comment about the uh, QSL with, or the picture. Okay. One thing I wanted to comment on. Notice this. Uh, notice the difference in signal strength, but listen to the audio. Uh, the audio comes right up. I mean, it's it's really, really nice. Um, and also notice the static crashing. You'll see, you'll see the pan adapter jumping. What you're seeing there with the pan adapter jumping is static crashing. And when I crack this thing open, I'm going to go completely dry on the gate. Um, yeah, then, then you'll realize what's really going on. Let me get... Let me unmute this so you can listen for a minute. Very 
So, uh, well, let's see, bell bottoms and uh, high 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 heeled shoes and disco. Did you do that? Uh, no. Um, I like the music, but uh, as far as dancing is concerned, I have never understood that particular activity. It, Boy, a lot of QRM in here. <laughs> Oh, I'm Jeez. talking about 19, late 70s. I feed the bearer sign. It got blown down during the storm the other day. I got blown down. I found it in the middle okay, of the road. Okay, you see that static I crash right there? I'm going to reattach it to the post today. And I sent you all a couple pictures of that. We rode up there in the side by side. You hear the static and, uh, crashing? My tools in the back. My, my, you can uh, barely my hear Milwaukee, it. Uh, screw gun now, check this that. out. I'm going to bring, I'm gonna bring uh, the, there you go. Big, our the, the, the gate the out. I'm getting the mail, too. Contact. And, Here we uh, go. There you go. Uh, who's the contact? WX9 DX Global 4 in Florida. You guys got just a quick second if I could interrupt. Go ahead. Yeah, this is Jimmy down here in Florida. I've got a friend of mine here uh, on the harbor uh, and uh, just wanted to show him uh, Sorry about that. how far this thing would come uh, is... on a ham radio. Over. Okay, uh, okay, Jimmy, what, what are you running down there? We're using a um, inverted L on 75 meters fed with a 4 to 1 balance and uh, using an AOS 200M with a 746 Pro radio. Over. Okay, well, I'm up here in uh, Georgia in the mountains of North Georgia. See how he's really there. not that much stronger oh, than the weaker crazy. station? Mike Uniform, you're making it up here to the mountains of North Georgia pretty good there, uh, Jimmy. Uh, I, I'm going to pass it around and see if the other guys can give you a signal report, too. Uh, uh, is that okay, or do you want to you just want to uh, just hit and run? No, that's fine. I appreciate the time. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start kicking stuff out. I'm going to disable it, so I'll disable the uh, gate first. Okay, Jimmy. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, we're 5 by 9 in the North Georgia mountains. Uh, uh, let's uh, turn it over to Bruce up there in um, uh, up there in Minnesota. Is there RPP? Are you copying, Jimmy? Uh, W2FMU. Uh, W2FMU and zero RPP. I can okay, hear him there, but coming out. I have a hard time uh, making out what he's saying, so he's uh, a little bit weak up here. Okay, that's the denoiser out. I'm going to bring the RF gain all the way out. Either, but, uh, uh, I know he's in there, but that's a Okay, see, that's the raw front end of the 7300. That's raw. Oh, I left this in. Okay, that's the raw front end. So I'm going to wind it all back in. Here we go. Uh, and uh, uh, sounds like everybody did, so that's good. Everybody that volunteered did, but anyway, so uh, that's good. And uh, thanks for the uh, check on my uh, my mic. Ironically, uh, 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 Ernie, I had uh, got a hold. I got hold of Bruce uh, uh, for. Uh, he's in the process of moving. That's why he's not here now. He's moving the next couple of days. So he's, he's probably not going to be around for a couple more days. Once he gets moved in, uh, uh, it's, uh, and he told me what he About half a career and then uh, did uh, the pilot thing uh, on my own all the way through flight instructor, single engine flight instructor. But I think you are. You don't have to follow my lead. It's just what I... Um... WA-30, this is K2YN. Yeah, K2YN, WA-30. I'm looking at a launcher right here. There's a kit for 119 bucks. I may just do that, but uh, we'll see. Very nice, John. You're 20 over. You always do uh, very well here in uh, in Pittsburgh and in West Virginia. Thank you. Mexico zero kilo Victor kilo, a uh, Mike zero kilo Victor kilo. Listening. Boy, he's strong. Wow. Uh, CQ forty, CQ forty, uh, Mike zero kilo Victor kilo, 
Uh, Mexico Zero, Kilo, Victor oh, Kilo, calling CQ. Man. I call in CQ anywhere. Mike Zero, Kilo, Victor Kilo, listening. See, now, that's nice, ain't it? <laughs> it's freaking... You don't have to listen to that crash bang like people banging freaking pots together. I mean, oh my God. this camera oh, I think we're done with that camera for now Mexico Zero, are you still in there? Kilo One Golf, Mike Mike. I knew he was going to disappear the minute I got ready to go. Bummer. semana no el otro voy a subirlo ahí Thank you, 7-3. 9 kilo 2 November, Oscar Kjordan. Something wrong with your kilo? Oh my god, there's a transmitting station and okay, slow okay, scan on the same frequency. Almost in the same frequency. Now there's somebody just below him. Yes, a Lindia Uniform 5, Mark wow. Radio Kilo. Good morning, Q59. Yeah, thank you, uh, Michael. Thanks for the contact and 7 3 for now. Thank you, Kilo 2 November Oscar. Kilo 1 Golf Mike Mike. Kilo 1 Golf Mike Mike. Kilowatt 1 Germany Mike Mike. Man, that. Oh, that's Kuwait. I was trying to figure out where that was. I don't know if I was running power. Kilowatt 1, Golf Mike Mike. He, he's going to have to shut off Europe because there's no way I'm getting through there barefoot unless he calls for stateside. Kilowatt one, Golf Mike Mike. Kilowatt one, Germany, Mexico, Mexico. Kilo one, Golf Mike Mike. Uh, Mexico. 
<laughs> There's not a chance in hell he's going to hear me. All right, I'm listening to that. That's funny exactly stuff. I get right a there. class three medical, although I did have one with five, uh, what do you call it, exceptions or That's pretty funny. whatever. Last time I had one about three or four years ago. Okay. And I had a, another medical. Uh, they've eased up on medicals now. They, I got one for, called... Uh, so... Uh, there's a new system they've got out now. I can't remember Let me the name of this it now. For a second. All right. A uh, couple questions. How many plugins you have working, and show how you set up the sound compressor. Okay. Uh, for the sound compressor, that's right here. All right. So uh, the input is around 1.5 dB. Uh, attack is at zero because I want it to hit immediately. Uh, release I have set at 784 milliseconds. Uh, this you really have to play with. These are your ratios right here, 4, 8, 12, 20, infinite. Uh, you have your output and you have your dry or wet. In other words, the raw signal or the post compressor signal. So that's how that's set up right there. Uh, what do you use for the HDSDR? Do you have the RF module? I use the RX7300, Martin. Um, the RX7300 mod. Um, just a inexpensive little mod. Uh, gives you an IF out uh, tapped on the board. Takes longer to get the cover off than to plug the stupid thing in. Uh, seriously, exponentially longer to, to get the cover off than to put the mod in. Um, it's called the RX7300 mod. Don't waste your money on a board. I don't care what anybody says. I've been running this for four years, five years, almost five years now. And pff, um, you don't need a board for this thing. Just just get an RX7300. Don't waste your money, man. Um, and right now I'm running an Aspi. hate these things, uh, HF Plus, but... Um, you don't need to because I'm not even using it. I'm not monitoring it. All I'm using it for is a control surface. So even an RTL SDR will work. Some cheap piece of crap. That's all you need just to see the spectrum so you can point and click on it. And of course, HD SDR, you have to go in and you have to tell it to communicate with a radio. So you will need OmniRig. Make sure OmniRig's installed. Um, so that's what my rig looks like. Sync Rig 2. Uh, the Anon's on Rig 1. Um, rig 2, make sure that's checked. Sync 2 Omnirig, sync from Omnirig. Sync tune frequency. Frequency. That's it. That's all you need. Bang, boom, done. And this will take uh, the radio anywhere you go. So. Uh, you do very well all the time. So thank you for letting me know. And but anyway it was a 1972 year so okay let me show you the denoiser really quick or no 78 make that 78 so you can reduce this even more in, uh, so if you listen 19, here 19 uh, let me think here 1988 or 89 somewhere in there so it wasn't that the airplane wasn't that old it uh, 9,000 Eight hundred dollars for it. Not no, ninety seven hundred dollars for it. And about three years later, after I that's pretty quiet. Repainted so, it, put a transponder. In so your gate, if your gate starts things, pumping, right? Um, we flew it back to Ohio. Some people. Where I moved let me mute from this quick. Some people, the way they talk, they have kind of a weird cadence, where they say a couple words and then they stop. And if it's pumping on you, this release right here on the gate, this will help. You can ramp this up. Actually, that's pretty low. I usually run it because uh, you really don't want it to close too often. You just want it to close at the end of the over. You know, at least that's me. If you run it real tight, like down here, it's going to be literally almost every word. It's going to slam shut, and that's that's kind of annoying. So. We'll set this right here and see if that settles the score a little bit. Little things, little, little things to fix here and there. 
Yep. So I don't know. The XY yeah, says no better. more airplanes. I spent so much money on planes and flying lessons. And what did I get back for, from it? Well, it made me feel good, but it didn't make Maxwell feel very happy. So anyway, back to you, K4MOG from NA3P. NA3P, K4MOG. Well, Dick, did you uh, fly in the Air Force? One thing... I was an F-4 uh, weapon. That is so nice to listen to, isn't it? Holy cow. Man, I was in here listening to this for like three hours straight, and there was no fatigue. Zero fatigue after after making these, uh, doing this setup. Um, just completely changed the whole listening experience. I mean, you know, and if you, see, you can see the pan adapter jumping. See that? Look at that. Those are huge static crashes. I'll kick the audio back on. You tell me what you hear. It's it's unbelievable. You actually uh, went to F four pilot training, or just sitting in the back seat? Uh, sitting in the back seat. I was a back seater, but uh, I can fly the airplane. Isn't that unbelievable? In the back seat, but uh, that wasn't really what I was supposed to be doing. But I I can do it over. Yeah. Well, you know, if anything had happened to the pilot. Uh, it would be very nice to have that uh, capability for sure. Now, you were down at Homestead, did you say? Yep. Yeah, Homestead. I went through F-4 training from about February, or was it January? January, February 80 till uh, the summer 80. And then they shipped me out to Germany. Uh, over. Yeah, Roger. Uh, gee, I wonder if you know... I'm trying to think of his name. Um, well, I will eventually. Uh, you may have been uh, in his uh, group. I'm not sure. Where were you based in Germany? Han Air Base, Hotel Alpha, Hotel November. Han Air Base. Over. Uh, Roger. What was your primary job to uh, suppress the... Uh, the uh, Russian uh, radars? Well, in, in Germany, I, I, I flew in the F4E, and we had a primary mission of uh, pulling nuclear alert and secondary mission of basically uh, uh, air defense. So, uh, yeah, we did a lot of sitting behind barbed wire fences waiting for the, the balloon to go up, but it never did, thank, thankfully, or... A DJ. Yeah, that was a thankful time because I think, uh, weren't you just supposed to be able to hold for 24 hours? Uh, wasn't that the idea? Uh, throw everything in and hold for 24 hours? Uh, back then we did either two days or three days. The weekend shift was Friday through Sunday, which kind of sucked, but otherwise it was two days over. Uh, Roger. Where did you take your R and R in Germany? Did you ever make it over to uh, uh, some of the uh, Austrian uh, resorts? Over? Uh, yes, I, I actually went to Austria once. Me and the X Y L were uh, camping out in a okay. regular, just an old Coleman tent <laughs> in a campground in Germany. Yeah, you have to play with it. Um, it's pretty amazing. You know what static crashing sounds like, man. You know how you hear people all the time say, you know, good Lord, I got 20 over static crashing, and you're only about an S9. I can't hear you. Now, this guy right here, if you look at his Never signal, in any resorts in he's Austria, about an S9. We did look go right here. for a week in Switzerland. My brother Danny came over right after he graduated from high school, and uh, we went skiing for a whole week in uh uh, Engelberg, I think, what was the name of that town? Engelberg, Switzerland, crazy. Or something like that. Absolutely it was a really crazy. nice little uh, ski town over. Okay, uh, Steve, uh, I've just put the SDR Uno and Omni Rig SDR console on the i 7 6 Do you think the MFJ? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, hardwire it, Steve. Hardwire that sucker. Um, bring a. Um, if you have a PTT line or anything, like if you, uh, I don't know, some, some rigs have something in the back. Um, 
for keying an amp, you know, basically what you need is any line that'll pull it to ground so you can hard key it. Uh, they do work. Um, I take it you watch the video only by <laughs> only want by the 1708B that is designed for um, an SDR, uh, an SDR. Um, what happened? I lost my screen. <laughs> Dean, what's up, dude? Uh, see, this is. <sighs> Man, dude, I'm trying to figure out how to get this onto the Anon. Because if I can uh, if I can stick this on anything, all I need is an audio source. So I need to be able to, <coughs> excuse me, uh, pipe the audio. The audio is already going through the computer to the Anon. Um, but this thing will work on any radio. Any radio. Literally. Silly, man. This whole setup. And it's free. Free! Except for, well, I haven't tried the onboard sound card. Like I said, you guys could try that. Uh, I won't guarantee anything, but hey, you never know. Uh, uh, we, got, we got really hot signals in here. Really hot. I'm going to just take a look back through. The mountain soft. Uh, Respond to you about it. That's all. Oh, yeah. It's in Empty room syndrome. It has everything to do with the speaker that each individual... These balance are, they're so heavy. You may want to look into something called a spider pole. If you can look up a spider pole, uh, they're push-up mass that uh, yeah, they're perfect, lightweight Steve. and so you bring, can support uh, the center of the that, antenna. You know, that's the only way you're going to... So if that pulls to ground and that's designed to key an amp, that will absolutely work. Um... Hey, Jelly Roger, how you doing, man? Don't do it. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you've got an RCA uh, line, like if it's the same line that would go to an amplifier to key the amp, yeah, uh, just jam that into the back of, uh, jam that into the uh, 1708B. Uh, again, make sure that that, uh, let me go get it. I take it you guys saw you saw the video, but I'm gonna go get it anyways because you asked. Hold on. Make sure this is the one you get, period. They sell a bunch of them with all different freaking boards in them. It's crazy, different jumper configurations. So that is the RF Sense SDR Receiver TR Switch. You notice it says SDR Receiver TR Switch, uh, MFJ1708B-SDR. Has to say SDR on it. And you should be okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, what's rattling your speaker off the desk? Um, oh, my audio. That is the audio that goes flipping out the antenna through the Anon right there. That is the stuff. Um, so that's it, folks. I don't know. I'll give you something to uh, think about. Play with. Hey, James. Um, pretty amazing. I'm, I'm going to just go through before I close off and I'll, uh, just do some, uh, boy bands noisy. Wow. Sorry about it. Um, we brought some, uh, little, uh, souvenirs. Uh, we didn't spend a whole lot of money. Back then we didn't spend a lot of money, but, uh, I bought a uh, copper plate with some artwork on it and a miniature uh, tea dispenser, Russian style tea dispenser in the in the east part. About all we bought, really. We didn't buy a whole lot. You'll find that in uh, a sharp I, I QSP. Did, we did do all the, you know, 
touristy kind of things and it's all the touristy the, things. Okay, so let me just say this. We're in Germany uh, on this tour, but I just don't remember all. Like everything, you're going to have to fuss with it. So you're thinking to yourself probably, well, I don't really like the gate function of it. Well, the real advantage, so, you know, if you look at 40 meters, look at this pan adapter. I mean, it's it's just jumping all through here. Look at that. That's that's lightning. That's all static crashing happening somewhere as the band's stretching out. It's picking it up. Um, you're going to have that, but this system suppresses that radically. Like, you can't even hardly hear it. If you listen to that in a conventional front end, like your front end unfiltered, I mean, this is like a massive filter system for the front end of your transceiver. I mean, lethal, right? And you watch it on your uh, uh, S meter. I mean, you, you, you guys have seen static crashing like 20 over, 10 over, 20 over. I've seen it push 30 over. I mean, just crush this thing. I can't even stand it. I just shut the radio off and go upstairs. I can't deal with it, even with the RF gain down, because the problem is you turn the RF gain down, and if somebody's weak, it doesn't do anything about suppressing that. And what, what this does is it brings your the, the received audio up to meet everything else. So you can have a station at an S9 with 10 to 20 over static crashing, and you can't even hardly hear the static crashes. That's the amazing thing about it. Now, yes, you're going to have to run the gate open more uh, because the static crashing is triggering the gate, right? Uh, you can see this right here. Um, you'll see like the threshold. So I'll always set the gate up so that it's right, yeah, just a little bit above the threshold. But any static crashing that comes in will open it, but you can't look, you can't do it visually. You know what I'm saying? You have to realize what's happening audibly. And that's what struck me. Now, on a band, like I was listening on 20 today. Oh, my gosh. It was freaking awesome on 20. Um, because 20 is quiet. You know, there was no static. I couldn't hear any static crashing on 20 today. It was just quiet. And I just locked it down, man. It, <laughs> it was freaking great. Um, get the mute back off here. I'll kind of listen around a little bit. Wow. That's... Uh... <laughs> I don't even want to lay eyes on one of those machines. Oh, man. I mean, it's so quiet. Give me the heebie-jeebies for sure. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of interesting yeah, things still to do there, but I didn't feel it. very comfortable Extend in that place, the release especially a little bit more. in Germany sector. We had these guys following us around, hiding behind posts and bushes, taking pictures of us. You know, I was like, what are these guys doing? It's really, really freaky back then. Over, uh, Dick. It didn't stop. It didn't stop then. Okay. Uh, see, he's an S nine. The other guy, uh, he's about an S eight. We went to a Brandenburg Gate. Uh, you know, that was the main main gate there. That. Uh, what I need to find to show Germany you guys well, is a uh, huge difference. In... Was There's a way, and I forget what it is to uh, make the transmitter. Um, there's a way to force the SWR. Uh, okay, okay, Stefan. there's just not a lot happening. Seven nine, seven nine. Jeez. Okay. Okay, very good. My first call, I'll try the station in Iowa, which is, uh, I lost them at uh, Kilo Zero, Kilo Lima. Here, I've been Jabber John long enough. Uh, kangaroo dude, I love you, man. It's good to hear you, and uh, I'll I'll shoot for you again. Florida 73, anybody else is in there? KC4, JGT, in Virginia. 73, gentlemen, K That's nice, isn't it? So he's an S5, the other guy's an S9. So that's two S units difference. 
Victor X-ray K5VX. Now that's the problem. You might want to do it just to make sh make sure that the radio is even putting. We'll work on that for a minute. Roger, take your time. Stand it back. That's pretty cool, ain't it? Anyways, it's a quick demo of what I was talking about. All right. Uh, see you later, Jolly Roger. <laughs> hey, Tintillo, what's going on? Uh, off to bed, Steve. Uh, yeah, consoles, uh, Steve, consoles probably the best piece of software. Um, uh, t I can explain, uh, I'll explain this and then I'm gonna duck out of here. Uh, this was a little longer and it was uh, a little bit more complicated than I was anticipating. So let me, uh, let's see. Let's get over here. Okay, so basically what I've got to go it's it's very simple I approach this from a very simplistic standpoint it's just like what well, I don't get crazy with stuff um, all this technical crap uh, I don't believe in it um, it's not necessary uh, you know you can do a lot with a very little with very little so let me t uh, explain to you exactly what I have going on with the audio stuff. So it, it take the sound card out of the equation. The sound card's critical for the Anon because the Anon runs through the network. Okay, so just kind of forget about that. The Anon actually receives the audio from the rack and then it's processed in the computer to the Anon, right? Now, this rack is a split rack. So one side of the rack goes to the Anon. This is the Anon EQ. This is the Anon side of the 204, compressor limiter gate, and uh, the Virtualizer 3D is running on the stream and the Anon, okay? It does not run on the 7300 because the 7300 I use primarily for DXing, right? So, um, so you don't, if you only have one transceiver, you don't need a split rack. You can go with all mono rack stuff, single channel stuff, all right? Um, I have two transceivers, so it just made sense. And you'll notice that this is completely different. I have to force the 7300 to do what I want it to do a lot harder than the Anon. You'll notice there's not even hardly a bump in the bottom end. And this is pretty much what the audio sounds like on the Anon coming out. Um, it's pretty brutal. Uh, I find the Anon is is just very, it's very friendly. <laughs> uh, you know, you can you can crush those things with audio, and they'll spit out pretty much eh, close to what you're putting in. Um, the preamp that drives the microphone is just a little ART MP Studio, uh, just an ART MP Studio preamp, and that's it. Nothing special. Uh, I think I paid $35 for it. So that flows into the EQ, into the Aphex 204, which is what makes the magic happen. Uh, that's everything right there, man. That 204 is the bomb. Uh, if something happens to this, I will try and find another one. I don't care how much money I have to spend. Um, there are some other ones. Uh, see, I've heard people, I mean, pretty much any, I shouldn't say that. I'm not a big Behringer fan. Um, I've had, like over there, I've got two or three pieces of Behringer equipment that failed. The preamp failed. The, you know, um, and the wife is stomping on the floor. Uh, the, pre the phantom power failed in the preamp, so I won't be buying any more Behringer stuff, probably. Um, and I have, uh, what's that, Multigate Pro, that failed. Um, I don't know. Anyways, the EQ seems to work good, and the compressor limiter works good. So I have no complaints, and the virtualizer seems to be nice. It's, it's just chugging along there. Really good. So from the compressor limiter gate into the virtualizer, and that basically, uh, use a virtualizer to give me a little bit of 
ambient room, ambient room reverb, uh, just to make it sound like I'm not talking into a pillow. And it's a little extreme listening to it right now, so I can back that down one click. And that's probably, yeah, that's better. That's better. That's more natural. A little bit too much reverb going. Uh, SDR radio sound card connector. Yes, they are. Uh, they run on VAC. Uh, the Anon is. Um, I don't have any actual like VB audio cable or anything running on the computer. None of that. Uh, the Anon has, basically you go into the VAC on the Anon and you tell it where to look for the audio. And because I have an external sound card, I just designate the sound card there. Um, what I'm very curious about, and I'm going to try on the Anon, is the Anon, these software-defined radios still have an element of latency to them, which bothers me. They should not. The te technology should be good enough, so they're not. Now, what I'm suspecting, I'm wondering is if I... I'm doing all my processing outside, but if I move the processing in and out into the realm of band labs in the DAW, is it going to become real time? In other words, is the latency going to disappear? I don't know. I'm kind of curious about that. So that would be really cool if it did. I haven't tried that yet. That's coming. So anyways, uh, I am running. I am running. Let's uh, go over here. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll probably bring that up a little bit. There we go. Took out a little bit too much. I like that rock and roll audio, man. That's, uh, some serious voodoo going on there. Oh, yeah. All right. That's it, man. <laughs> we'll uh, catch you guys later. I'm out of here, man. Well, um, let's see. Uh, see, I see they use two channels in Behringer Sound Compressor. These channels are connected in the No, they are not. They are... Okay, think of it this way. Each channel in each piece of the rack and each component feeds a different radio. So I have the Anon. Anon is on channel one, channel one, channel one. And virtualizer. 7300 is on channel 2, channel 2, channel 2. Uh, feeds the 7300. Uh, hopefully you get that. Um, I've heard people do that in series. You can. Um, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, power to the people. <sighs> wow. 7-3, Paul. Electronics. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Oh, I've been dropping the ball on this. Okay. Um, oh, shoot. Too late now. Uh, I forgot to do the... What happened? I forgot. You know how we always used to do life hacks? I forgot to do this. Uh, do the... Um, uh, I, I put the clips, uh, the... Uh, a clip, a snippet of lyrics to a song, and you guys guess um, what song it is and who did it. Can't believe it. Forgot all about that, man. Gate's a little tight. Uh, anyways, next one. I'm gonna have to I have to get a little post-it note and stick it up there, man. This my brain is shot, man. I, I did. I suffered some kind of brain damage last Christmas or something. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! We'll see y'all later at Tintio. Behave yourself. Uh, let me know how you make out with that. Um, hit me on the next stream. You know, jump into the chat if you if you decide to play with this. You know, I don't know, man. I'm running with it. I'm going with it. I I love this crap. Uh, this has completely changed how I listen. Uh, I don't have to listen to that garish, nasty front end anymore. I mean, this is actually better than the Anon. And it's better than running the HF Plus through console. It's freaking terrifying, man. It is. It's incredible. 
Now, console with this on top of it would be absolutely insane. Yo, yeah. There you go, Johnson. See, everybody focuses on, you know, it's, it, it just seems like these transceivers should have so much, such better uh, audio processing, uh, DSP systems in them on the receive side. You know what I mean? Who wants to listen to all that crap? I mean, I don't, you know, I like listening to about uh, yeah you know, 30 I mean, about, listen to uh, that. less than 30 amps at uh, 55 volts so we'll see how all that uh, pans out there's not too many people who are using this uh, R2K chip yet so uh, I'm not seeing anything so Crazy. I'm blazing the trail John over well Mike if it works half as well as the the existing amplifier works you hear that static um, crashing? It's just a little flutter. He's only about an S7, S8. Earlier, and I think you're experimenting with, a, with an inverted L. And the, the, the strange thing, That's awesome, the inverted man. L was, was working really... Awesome. Igor. MB1. Jeez, I'm glad I could... Oh, that's such a nice rig, man. The MB1. Oh, I'd love one of those. I think I think I met you before, didn't I, Igor? Um, yeah, killer rig. Uh, if I boy, if I could, they're like eight grand or something like that. They're expensive. Um, nice though. That is pure. That is pure uh, ham radio wetness right there. <laughs> hey, what's up, Tim? Um, all right, I'm ducking out of here. You guys behave yourselves, and uh, we'll catch up with you later. Maniac, guess what? I, wow, an hour and a half. I'm going to head up and do some uh, food. Donger needs food. 7-3 guys, K1GMM. Steve in the ditch. I'm going upstairs, man. Have a great evening.